What up players, it is Warboss today. Welcome back to my studio where I am going to be doing another Warboss Tay's Weekly White Dwarf Review. And we're actually looking at last week's episode, or last week's issue. I was going to do an episode last week, but uh, I couldn't really get the setting that I want. I'm s still kind of figuring everything out, but this will have to do. We're looking at issue number 104 for the week of January 22nd in Year of Our Lord 2016. This is one of, I think it's the final issue of the focus on the Volkite Fire Slayers. And the big release this week are these two characters. The, the previous week, their big release, literally their big release, was that Magma Droth, which we did a, a White Dwarf Weekly review on that issue. So, right inside the front cover, you see a lineup of the entire Fire Slayer army as has been released by Games Workshop. It's got all the units, all of the, the big new monsters, and it basically looks just like Games Workshop. <laughs> Somebody said, you know what's really popular? Dwarf dr uh, Troll Slayers. So why don't we make a whole army of Troll Slayers and justify everything in the new Age of Sigmar? It's gonna be awesome. Whether it is or not, I don't know. You know, I just paint the stuff. Big releases this week are these two little guys, Grim Wrath, Berserker, and the Battlesmith. So I'm not really going to be talking about the the fluff and the uh, the background or the rules because I'm I'm really a hobby guy. So I'm just taking a look at the models, the design, aesthetic, aesthetic, <laughs> aesthetic. Masi, you said a bad word. I'm sorry, Igor. <clears throat> the aesthetic of the the models. I I think the most obvious one is take a look at these guys here on the top. They have. Black beards, but with fire coming out of like their mouth and their nostrils and like flaring out down their chins through down the center. I think that's an interesting design, and uh, I just I, I don't know if I care for it. You can also see it reflected in their hair crests up at the top. It's kind of black with a shock of white in the front. And down here, you've got more of the uh, monsters, the magma droats with their characters on their back. Very very interesting. I'm trying to keep an open mind. I think uh, I, I want to just, you know, it's my hobby. I love it. Despite what I think about the fluff and the fiction and the story, I, I will always love my hobby. So, okay, the the release from this week was the Grand Alliance Chaos book. And so it's a book that has rules for an, a little bit of fluff. Not too much, though, but rules for all of the Chaos models in the range. That's a huge help for any collector who has the Chaos models. I think they're going to come up with four of these books because Chaos is a, one of the major four factions, right? And then you've also got Order, Destruction, and... Is there another one for Undeath? Undead, maybe? I think. I'm not sure. Anyways, they've reboxed some of these guys. I know that when the when the blood letter got taken off of the shelves, a lot of people were wondering why. It's because I think they wanted to rebox them, put them from a square base onto the circle bases. Some people were saying they were getting rid of it completely, but I was like, no ways. They just released this guy for the end times. So, uh, yeah, they definitely didn't want to do that. Then you've got a new book for the Horus Heresy, and uh, available this week was a book on Fire Slayers, a new Magma Droth, and uh, the art collection for Forge World. I think that's interesting. Forge World at this time had a big release for their Raven Guard. You've got the Raven Guard Dark Fury Assault Squad with a lot of really cool design elements to it. Look at the, the wings on the jump pack, make them look like the Raven Guard symbol. And uh, they're in some kind of modified Mark VI Corvus armor. The design of the shoulder pads has a little bit of the spike or the studs rather, and then the Raven Guard insignia on both the shoulder pads. I think that's really interesting. We've got the beaky helmets, and they look just really cool. Then the grandpappy of the Raven Guard here, Corvus Corax. I love this model. I think this model's terrific. The way that they've managed to sculpt him to look like just all of the elements of the the base really tie the model together. You've got just random rubble and architecture. You've got this one marine flying away from him. I think I've seen it painted up as a son of Horus. And uh, you've got Corvus up here, Corax. So check out the Forge World website if you want to see him fully painted up. Their test model looks really, really good. So congrats to them. The 
Army of the Week is painted by Amy Snugs. And she's got a Lizardman, or I guess they're called Seraphon now, Army. Really cool. I think some of her color choices are really, really good, like this black and orange for uh, whatever that is. What is that? I think that's a, is that a Forge World monster? I think that is. Yeah, that's really cool. And then she's got a Carnosaur over here. Um, yeah, that orange and black seems to be tying everything together. It looks really great. And here, her army on parade display. Beautiful. Really, really cool. I love the Stargate, or whatever you call it in the background over here. You got your slan on the floaty, his floaty palanquin fl shooting up on this tornado. And just the different colors are really shocking, vibrant, bright, really good. Then you've got, okay, so Games Workshop, if you didn't know, they released these boxes of, of models, kind of like starter armies, and each box has a sheet of rules in it that you can use and play with them in your games. And so the focus this week is on the Chaos, I guess, corn kit. So in it, you've got blood letters, a, one of these blood or skull cannon kind of things, and these, um, behemoth juggernaut riding ones. For $85 American, I think that's a really good deal. Here, Demons of Corn. Yeah, you've got your Skull Cannon. Actually, does it say here? Bah, 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 bah. Yeah, you've got a War Scroll, so you can use them immediately. And, okay, 14 miniatures for $85 American. I think these, these are great deals. They're, they would cost way more to buy them individually. And then you get to the Paint Splatter. Paint Splatter, I think, has been, it's gone through a really interesting kind of metamorphosis from the old Evy Metals, which I'll take a look at as well as a companion piece to this, the old uh, Evy Metal Masterclass. These are made for the beginner painter and, or the intermediate level painter who just wants to pick up a new army and not really worry about too much technique and just think like, okay, what do I need, what colors do I need to paint this model because I want to get it in my army. Quick very simple. I mean, when you take a look at the, the blue gem here, their four-step process on painting a blue gem, it's so simple and it's so easy and it's not at all the way that I would do it, but it creates a good, I guess, a, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, good is subjective, but it creates a very, very passable product. If you want to get your models painted quickly, then this is, th these are great guides to do it. So they're taking a look at their Grim Wrath Berserker. Now, the thing about these new releases, because the Fire Slayers have been released for three weeks at this point, each issue has been a focus on a Fire Slayer. So if you paint 40K or if you are looking for something different, you're not gonna get it. They wanna sell these Fire Slayer models, so they're gonna be putting up these articles on how to paint them. And I think last week was the Magma Droth, this week is the special character. But I mean, it's no different to me than painting the fire slayer they had in week one. I think if they wanted to do something interesting, they might have done the, the alternate color scheme for this guy with the black hair and the, uh, the different colors, but, and then they could have just written something like, if you want to paint this in the, the uh, more common color scheme, the popular one, then just refer to two issues ago, but that would probably, I don't know, that might sell more magazines as well for people who are interested in that other look of the army, but oh well. I think that, like I said, if you're a new painter and you just want to get these things on the board, then then they're, they're great guides. Real quick, real simple. You've got rules for your two new characters that were released. And then uh, this week, there's just some extra articles. Okay, this one I think is interesting and I think this is the most useful thing in the entire book because no matter what kind of painter you are, or what kind of army you have, at some point, you may want to think about doing a magma lava world kind of base. I remember when I first started painting, I thought there's no way, why would I ever want to do that? I, I, I don't play or paint or want to do anything like that because I played Warhammer Fantasy at, this, at the time. I didn't think I would ever need a, a lava base, but Things being what they are, magical realms, mortal realms, um, the, the entire universe is open for, you know, any kind of whatever you want to paint. And at some point, maybe you might want to, you, maybe not, but this would be an article where I would take a post-it note and stick it right here because, and then just write like Lava World painting guide and then shove it in my bookcase because there's no, 
I don't think there's any other reason why this, uh, as a painter, why I would want to purchase this book. So this is the price of admission. If you also want to paint the Fire Slayers or you have some old school dwarf troll slayers around, then this article might be interesting too. Slap another post-it note on that. And there you go. The rest of the back is just inspiration. There's a little plug for their, their YouTube channel. I think Duncan Rhodes made some great videos. Is he the one doing this one too? I don't know, I don't, didn't name him, but Duncan Rhodes did a, an Ultramarines video that I thought was super helpful, and uh, he's, he's got a great teaching technique, so check him out. I highly recommend it. Good job, Games Workshop, getting him to do your videos. The last page has a Regiments of Renown basically saying, buy our armies, put them together, and create some good history for them. It's a normally corn abhorrent Nurgle force that is working together with these corn demons because... <laughs> because of reasons. Oh yeah, this uh, Zinch Gaunt Summoner comes by and says, hey guys, we gotta all work together now. So, like, I love reading the paragraphs just to kind of see how they justify this mishmash of whatever because Age of Sigmar is all about just throwing your armies together, putting them on the table, and having a good time. All right, that's my review for, uh, this should have gone up last week. Oh, Duke, shh, Duke wants to say hi. So, thanks for watching, and let's see if we can get him on camera. Dookie, say hi to YouTube. Hi, YouTube. I have a snaggly tooth. <laughs>